So let's just talk about how you might be feeling during this time, right? There's just so much stress um, in terms of the coronavirus, in terms of just the political landscape right now, things that are going on. And I put a bunch of the feeling, a bunch of feelings on here um, that are just totally normal. Like anger is totally normal, right? Like we're just so mad at what's going on. We don't we're mad that maybe it's gotten our jobs off track, our, our personal lives off track. We don't know when we'll regain a sense of normalcy or if that will happen. We're confused as to how this happened. Um, we're just frustrated that things are not going the way we wanted to. We're frustrated, again, that things have shifted, that we're dealing with these big transitions. We're kind of trapped in our homes. Uh, a lot of us are feeling sad or worried about our futures, our current situations. It's just added a new level of stress to our lives. Um, we're overwhelmed, we're annoyed, we're distracted, we're tired. I don't know if you guys have heard about like coronavirus exhaustion. Has anyone experienced any increased exhaustion since coronavirus happened? I know I have. There's been like a lot of days, and again, I'm lucky I can create my own schedule, but I know I've been taking naps more than usual. I've been like, you know, sleeping more solidly at night, or maybe you're not sleeping well. Um, I'd love to hear in the comments, like which camp you're kind of falling into, if it's if it's been affected. Like, there's just this general um, increased exhaustion, this universal exhaustion everywhere. So, it truly is affecting our. A daily life and our business growth and our career growth and our ability to focus on our jobs. Um, you know, um, if you've experienced that. So some people are saying so tired, like harder to exercise. Yeah, just less energy. This is all really, really normal. Um, so we're going to cover first the sabotages that have been affecting your focus, um, your business, your career growth during this time. Um, is anybody familiar with like self-sabotages? So I'm going to talk about four self-sabotages that, and this is like interesting because these are called self-sabotages, but right now, like it's a sabotage, not because of you yourself causing this, but just because of the world events kind of causing these things to come up um, at a different level and, and be more obvious than, than they may have been before. And the four self-sabotages we're going to cover are procrastination, shiny object syndrome, imposter syndrome, and and rethink. So procrastination, um, I think this one in particular is just really, it was really intense um, and apparent at the start of coronavirus, right? Who was starting to like just struggle to get their work done during the day? Um, maybe some of you like transitioned to working from home when you were working in the office. Um, and that was a big transition because you found a lot of things around the house to procrastinate with, you know, um, Netflix a little longer in the morning or, or a little earlier at night or laundry or just straightening up or again like maybe being overtired caused you to procrastinate the start of your day right um, a lot of times it's finding other business tasks to work on first instead of your top priority priority or maybe it was even you know talking to coworkers more instead of moving through your work to-do list or focusing on the projects you should be be working you should be working on right another way procrastination shows up is like waiting for everything to be perfect do we have any perfectionists or recovering perfectionists here um, a lot of times we don't allow ourselves to move forward with what we need to be working on because we want everything to be just so set up um, and another thing that happens is we have this massive to-do list that overwhelms you. I know this ha used to happen to me. I would have this massive to-do list with no real plan. I would procrastinate by choosing the easy, easier tasks and things that weren't as scary, weren't as important, you know, were a little quicker to get through. And then the the harder tasks, the ones that were a little bit out of my comfort zone, um, really just kind of stayed like on the same to-do list. So for those of you consulting or looking for jobs, like it may be like maybe you're holding back from or reaching out to certain contacts or things like that, that could potentially help you because, you know, you're a little bit afraid or, you know, it's a little bit uncomfortable for you to outrage or maybe even sometimes you're, you know, procrastinating on signing up for an event like this because you just don't know what it's going to be like. It's a little uncomfortable. So procrastinating 
procrastination is a self-sabotage that really has come up just because of our energy levels and our inability to focus right now. Um, then there's shiny object syndrome, right? And that's when you just want to find a magic bullet. Like you're like, there must be something out there that is going to fix this problem. And you keep jumping around from thing to thing, right? So maybe again, for those of you like looking for a new position or something like that, um, maybe you're like, let me go on LinkedIn. Let me go, you know, on Indeed. Let me reach out to connections. And you're just kind of going from thing to thing and not really giving 100% to one task. So maybe you go on LinkedIn a little bit but you don't really do like an overhaul of your profile or do deep research into things. Um, or you look at what everybody else is doing, right? Like for those of you with coworkers, maybe you're like looking at what they're doing and you're like, oh my gosh, they're so, you know, competent. They're getting all this done. They're so much ahead of me. Um, you know, they're, they're just able to do other things and, and how can I, how can I do what they're doing. So that's how shiny object syndrome comes up. You're always looking for the next, next thing, the next solution without really implementing anything. Um, and then there's imposter syndrome, right? And that's where you feel everyone is better than you and you feel like a fraud. So again, with the crisis that came up this year, I think a lot of times for those of us who feel like, have felt like we're struggling with it, a lot of times we're looking at other people and we're like, oh my gosh, they're handling it so, so much better. Maybe your friends, maybe your acquaintances, maybe your family, maybe your coworkers or your boss. And you're just like, oh my gosh, um, I, I just can't do this. Um, every, everybody else knows how to do it and I don't. The other way it shows up a lot of times is I need to learn more. So, um, you know, this is common for all of us, you know, at Columbia, like high achievers, right? Like we feel like we need to do another master's program. We feel we need another certificate in something. We need to take another course in something. We need another class, right? Like it just becomes really big distractions or we feel like I'm not smart enough. I'm not liked enough. You know, like we just feel like something's wrong with us. Um, and then rethink. This is one that I've just come to, um, I've discovered myself and working with just hundreds of women, high achievers and entrepreneurs, and this really drains your energy and resources. This is also common in, I've found women or men with like a history of trauma, a traumatic event that happened in your life um, that's really affected you and just causes you stress and anxiety and can, you know, come up at any, any time. And this is when you completely forget about or disassociate with an important task or something you should to follow through on and it gets you stuck in this like ending endless repeating loop because you can't move on and you're adding more stress to your life okay so here's the deal there are three strategies to help you increase productivity and business growth um, career growth, things like that, that we're going to cover. And that's clear goal setting. That's a structured schedule. And that's the RSO system, right? And that's where you remove, systematize, and outsource things. So um, clear goal setting is when you break down your goal using the consistent income generator process and you pre-plan what you're working on. And basically because I really work primarily with entrepreneurs, um, the goal, the consistent income generator process, which we're going to get into, gives you a clear picture of your big goal income for the year. And for you guys, I mean, I would be interested in thinking like, if you guys are not focused on an income goal, right? Um, is there another goal that you're really focused on in terms of your career? And I know it sounds like some of you might be focused on a new job um, or something like that. Um, and maybe you do want to add in some other income streams in addition to your job. Like maybe you want to start consulting on the side or things like that. Or maybe you want to like make investments. Um, so you can really like choose that goal and then break it down into more measurable measurable chunks and help you create that create that action plan so this puts the focus on one income stream at a time or one project at a time to be quite honest so that there are no distraction distractions and you know what business actions to focus on um so for example if you are running your business right um 
you might have a goal of like $80,000 in income or hopefully even higher. Um, so you would really break down like, what does it take to make that, make that money? And again, if you guys have a career and you guys are taking on extra side projects or consulting again, like how many consulting projects do you need to take on? How many consulting clients do you need to take on? You know, how many investments do you need to make or how much do you need to profit at those? Right. Um, and it's basically breaking it down into the different categories of how, you would bring in that income. Maybe you're going to start to get training opportunities or um, workshop opportunities or expert speaking opportunities. All of you are extremely talented and can for sure take advantage of additional opportunities besides your work. Like I said, even for me as a social worker, I found a ton of ways to um, create contracting positions and um, consulting positions and things like that for a career that's not even common. So here I give an example of if you're, you know, a business owner, a service provider, a contractor, a freelancer, or someone like that, um, you know, you might want to find, you have this income goal for the year, and then you would break it down to 10 clients at $5,000. If you're running a group or a workshop or something like that, maybe it's 20 group members at $1,000. Um, and then, you know, very common in my profession is creating courses, creating content that you can sell over and over again. So maybe in addition to that, you would need a hundred courses sales at $100. So what that does is it allows you to really say, okay, this is what I need to focus on at this point throughout the year. Um, and, and this is how I break down that process. Um, and then from there, you, you pre-plan what you're working on, right? So you choose whatever income chunk you're working on. If you're working on, again, getting a new job position, you would really focus on that. You would create a weekly action plan that aligns with your monthly goal. So for example, if you're um, looking for a job um, or working on a career goal, right? Like you can even do this for your career. Um, what's a project you're working on and what do you need to do to make it happen or maybe like you're looking to actually get a promotion towards the end of the year so what do you need to focus on each month to make to get the get the steps into place so that you could apply for that like new position within your job or or um you know, really advocate for yourself to get a promotion or to get a raise or something like that, right? So you would create a weekly action plan that aligns with your monthly goal and then choose three to five actions each week that are correlated with your goal and you wanna be consistent. So, you know, again, just with some of you looking for new positions, looking for consulting positions, looking for jobs, like maybe one month, it's like, I'm gonna solely focus on LinkedIn, right? And like one action might be like updating your profile. Another action might be like increasing your contacts by a hundred people. You know, a third action might be um, reaching out to 20, 20 contacts, right? Um, and really just being consistent with this. This might be things that you repeat every week, right? Look on, you know, look for, look for a job on Indeed or whatever you use for looking for a job. Um, look for a job, find, you know, 10 jobs to apply to and just really making it really measurable because a lot of times we don't get very specific. We don't make things measurable. And then it's really hard to actually, um, you know, make your goals happen, make them achievable. Um, so now we're going to talk about a structured schedule, which is what I, what I was just kind of alluding to that it would come up. So there's three systems that work well with this, three steps to this, which is having a master schedule, which is batching and which is the Pomodoro method. And this really makes your life easier when you're going after goals or, or again, like if you've been really struggling, even with your job right now, struggling to stay focused and, and to take steps to move forward on things. Um, so the master schedules, when you plan out your week in advance, right? And you have things written down and your consistent day to day. This can include outside work activities as well. So something like this, um, you would write down like, wake up at 6 a.m., right? Breakfast at 6.30, um, you know, whatever, workout at 7 a.m., 
you know, personal development reading at like 8 a.m. or whatever until you get your, your work day started, then obviously you can map out the hours of like your work as well. So for me, just, um, you know, being an entrepreneur, like I will have different categories that I, I have in my master schedule. So I will have things like client hours, like clients can only book in during certain hours for me. They're usually Tuesdays and Thursdays that they could book in to talk to me. Monday's like my admin day and I try to break it down into different projects. Wednesday's like my team management day where I have like a, a team call with, with whoever, um, with my project manager who works for me and my admin admin and things like that. Um, and these things are consistent um, in the schedule every time. I might have like a content creation chunk of time where I'm working on things like presentations like this or sending emails to my list or creating social media content, right? And it's really so helpful to have this repeat every week as you can, as much as possible, right? So um, I know even one of my friends has just started doing that this, he works at Netflix and like, you know, he has certain days for meetings. He has on Wednesday, he cuts off meetings, you know, after half a day so he could do other stuff. You know, having email times is really important in this. Um, a lot of times we fall into the email trap where we're just checking our emails all day, which is okay. Also who uses email as a procrastination or texting as a procrastination? I know I do. It just becomes automatic to check it and to reload it. Um, and you really want to like, you know, leave your, put your email into your master schedule and maybe like spend two 30 minute blocks per day checking your email rather than getting off track and checking it continuously throughout the day. Of course, depending on your job duties and how that works out. Um, so it's just really being consistent. So, you know, as we were just talking about, um, you can actually, um, if you say you're going to have a project and you're going to work on it, really blocking off that time in your master schedule to work on it. So maybe every Tuesday night, you know, you're working on, on a project from like six to eight, a personal project time, um, and just being really consistent with that. And of course that takes, you know, the consistency consistency can take time to develop. This may feel a little uncomfortable at first. So start with one day per week. I'm someone who has to start a little slower with new habits. I can't like change everything overnight. I know there are other people who can. Um, so you can put this into place like slowly, slowly over time um, and just start with one day being consistent with it, having a master schedule for one day and then adding more and more. And I will say it's kind of crazy cause you know, I work with like a lot of business owners, consultants, things like that. Um, and it's always like, we want freedom. We want to escape the nine to five world for freedom. And the reality is, is like structure gives you freedom. Before I started doing this system and before a lot of my clients have, we're like working all the time. We're not getting things done. We're not shutting down at the end of the night. We're literally working from like 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. And we're getting worn out and we don't have any freedom. So this actually helps get freedom. Again, if you're outside of projects or work right now and looking into projects, I think this is also really important. Like I said, I've taken time off from work where I volunteered. And then when I came back, I didn't have a job and I just like fell into the loop of, I remember like one, at one period when this happened, I was just like watching literally Dawson's Creek, like all day, every day for like all the seasons. Um, and it's because I didn't have a schedule. Like I didn't have to have a schedule. Um, so again, like you will want to put in things like when you're looking at jobs, and be as specific as possible. So maybe put in like LinkedIn time in one section and then put in like times where you're scheduling coffee chats or connection calls with people, um, times where you're outreaching to people to just build relationships again and pitching yourself or times when you're doing job applications. Um, you can, you want to schedule that all. Um, and then I recommend using batching to complement the master schedule. And this is where you focus on one task at a time. You do not multitask. Um, and you do that one task repeatedly. So again, that's what I was just saying about like maybe filling out job applications or things like that. Like you would basically sit there and fill out like five job applications in a row. Like we know they're timely, they're time cons they could be time consuming. Um, so you would want to really one have like job research time and you would put off 
put like maybe have like one or two hours in your schedule for job research time. And instead of like finding one job and then switching to the application process and then switching back, you would actually like find, you know, five to 10 jobs. These are just made up numbers, by the way, you guys, five to 10 jobs to apply to. Then you would go back and then you would in the next you know, batching chunk of time, um, then you would do all the applications. So that way you're like in the same mindset, you're not switching from task to task and you get things done more quickly. And again, like you have your email batching time where you go through your emails. I know I used to, again, check emails on and off all day. And when I started um, checking emails during a structured chunk of time um, and just replying to them, it was crazy how much quicker I cleaned out my inbox and can be organized and actually started like filing emails. So like, I I have like, you know, inbox, you know, inbox zero, basically. Um, inbox zero is like, I don't know if you guys know what inbox zero is, but it's when you get your inbox down to like zero emails um, because you file things, you delete things, you, you do things like that. And it's like so much, it's so much easier. Um, it's so much less of a time waste. So I would love to know, do you guys, are there any tasks that you currently are really good at batching or are there any tasks that you would like to start batching? You can just drop it into the chat. Can you see this being helpful with anything? Again, it works well with like emails. It works good with meetings. Like I said, I love it for my client days because then I could just get into client mode and, and have client session after client session after client session, you know, and, and be in that energy. Um, I'm an introvert, so it really does help. Yeah, responding to friends' text messages. Again, like this works great for, you know, personal tasks as well. Yeah. Right. It's so easy to like get bounce around with email and with Slack and stuff like that. So if you can, you can do this, um, very, very specifically. Yeah. Deleting, um, chat things could be helpful. Um, and actually we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna go into the next strategy, which is called the Pomodoro method. Is anyone familiar with the Pomodoro method? Have you, have you tried it before? So the Pomodoro method is a time management technique. It uses a timer and this is where you take, you do a 25 minute work session and then you take a five minute break. Um, and then you do four rounds of this. So 25 minutes, five minutes, 25, five, 25, five, you get the idea. And then after the fourth round, you take a longer break of 15 to 30 minutes and then repeat it. Um, this complements batching really well because again, you could be focused on one task and you could do the whole four rounds just on one task and, and get it done. So now we're gonna talk about the RSO system. And basically, as you guys know, time equals money, right? So the RSO system helps you to assess time leaks, um, which are tasks that drain you and don't lead to income growth, right? So um, we're looking, we're, I'm talking about business, but again, like uh, this is also personal tasks as well. Um, and I think, you know, what's happened with the coronavirus is that work and does anybody feel like work and personal have really like blended over like way too much and there's just like again because you're working at home you could work all the time and you know like you it's hard to like switch over to other tasks so again there's also personal tasks that you can like start to get rid of out of your time that are that are draining you um so that way you can go back to just kind of having things separated a little bit so the first part of the RSO system is remove. And that's where you remove tasks that aren't enjoyable and aren't helping you um, build your business or like make money or, you know, or maybe even aren't like, you know, in terms of, again, for those of you who are not business owners, like aren't contributing to your, your happiness levels, right? Um, these are often tasks like, posting on social media platforms, like doing things that don't help you get clients or like don't help you get a job or don't help you work on your, like maybe don't help you get ahead at work, right? Like maybe you are spending too much time like on Slack conversations with your coworkers, like 
when I used to have a job, this is how long ago it was. Like it was G chat. Like we all talked on G chat together. And like, obviously what would happen is I didn't always get my work done. And then I had to bring my work home. Right. Um, so rather than kind of limiting those things or checking email too much, or just like Googling too much stuff that you don't need to, you need to Google, like what are those tasks that you can actually remove um, so that you don't have to have to lose that time anymore. Um, so these are absolutely just looking at things again in your personal life. Like, you know, maybe you even at home, right? Like, you know, this could be if you have a partner, or if you have roommates, um, really looking at what do you need to do? Like, can you split things up? Um, better like what tasks can you remove like if you just like really really hate cooking dinner like and your partner likes it more maybe you guys like split that chat like maybe they take that task over and you take over something else um but just like really remove things that can absolutely be removed that aren't enjoyable or maybe you guys start to order like a meal planning service um or just even like blue apron or something like that right like really think about that or like food shopping if you hate it you know that's become a big one right now um is to really start to set up like instacart or things like that right remove those tasks that aren't enjoyable um one of the first tasks um you know that i've like removed is just kind of like again like for me it's over checking the email and like googling stuff and things like that um so just really think about like what can you get rid of that you just don't need to do anymore in, in your in your life um then there's a systematize um systemized tasks that are repeatable and can be automated or batched right um so this includes things like when you have a business like scheduling social media posts writing content bringing on new clients filling invoicing things like that if you are doing consulting work you know again on the side of your of of, of your job or just totally like, again, like do you invoice clients all at the same time once a month? Like what is your process for that? Like what kind of paperwork do you need to have new clients sign as they come on? Um, again, like what are your processes at home? Um, you know, like what are the, what are the processes for, again, like this is something that could be systematized like we were just talking about like dinner like who's doing what part are you doing meal prepping on Sundays like meal prepping can be done on Sundays you can cook a couple meals that are good for a few days like I recently um a few months ago like decided I needed to improve my health and lose some weight so I actually systematized like breakfast and lunch like I basically eat the same breakfast every single day um, lunch is like one of a couple of, uh, one of a few choices. Dinner can be like whatever, but this has honestly, you guys like systematizing this. It makes it so, it sounds so silly, but it's taken so much stress out of my life. Cause every day I'd be like, what am I going to eat? What am I going to eat? And I'd like spend a lot of time thinking about it, which may sound silly to some of you, but I know some of you may also connect to that. And I would like lose, like, then I wouldn't eat breakfast. Cause I'm like, couldn't be bothered thinking about something. And then I couldn't be bothered choosing something. And then by like lunchtime, I was like starving and I would like overeat. So this has just made my life so much easier. It's made food shopping easier. Um, it's not like so rigid, but it just, you know, it just like has become such a great, a great system and process in my life. Um, so start to think about, you know, again, with work and home, you know, melding together in ways that they never have before. And we really don't know for how long, um, really think about like, are there things that you can systematize? Can you systematize your morning routine? Like, like, are you, you know, what is your morning routine? Do you even have one? Like, how can you ease yourself into the day a little bit better? Like, do you need some personal development time? Do you need to exercise in the morning? So it actually happens. Like, how can you make things repeatable? Um, and then outsource. So outsourcing tasks um, is when you outsource tasks that are typically more affordable for someone else to do and are not relying on you. Like you don't actually have to do that task. Um, it's a lot quicker and it's a money saver for others to do it. So you can focus more on marketing manager, managing your income streams or just enjoying life once again, for those of you who are not so worried about, you know, different income streams, but you know, want your life back. So 
when you actually um, use Instacart, you're really outsourcing something. When you, one of the first things I ever outsourced wasn't even a business thing. It was a personal, like I hired a cleaning person. Um, it changed my, once again, changed my life just once a month. But like, I hate it cleaning. It takes me forever. Like I'm not, I can't even clean to my own standards. So I outsourced it. And now like my apartment is really clean and stays really clean a lot longer rather than me doing it. And I could put more money, I could put more time towards work or to, taking on new clients and things like that. And it's much more affordable for me. Um, maybe you can have someone do some of your errands for you. Like, it sounds crazy, but we don't need to be doing things at home. Like, you know, if any of you have kids, like, can you get a babysitter for extra hours per week? Or, you know, again, it doesn't have to be like this high level nanny, but you know, you can get someone from who's in college or high school to help you out around the house. It doesn't have to be expensive. You can literally find people for like $15 an hour to do tasks for you, to do your errands for you, things like that, that just make things so much easier. For those of you who are looking for jobs, like if you're, obsessing over how to write a LinkedIn profile the right way or obsessing over like your resume like you can actually outsource that to someone who can do it for you and can do it better for you and if it means that you're going to get a higher level job that pays more money um, because it's a more professional resume and you feel better about you know getting it out there to people then that's going to be really a lot better and I think those of you too who are at points in your career where you have admin admin assistants and or people on your team that do some of the tasks for you, really make sure that you're outsourcing the things that are not reliant on you. Um, just for example, like I can't outsource this presentation, but I actually outsourced the design of the slides. Like someone on my team did the slides because I hate that. It takes me forever and like very anal about it. Like I'm just not good at the design piece. So I had someone on my team do that. So that's outsource. Um, and again, like, what can you outsource and what can't you outsource? Again, like you want to outsource the things you're not good at that are not within your skill set that don't require you to do it. Um, all right, so that is the end. So if you have questions, you can submit them on the chat. I do have some um, freebies. So for those of you who are interested in like learning to batch better or learning more about the consistent income generator process for you that are interested in new income streams outside of your work, um, you can go over to nicolebloya.com slash library and download those. Um, and I'll put the link in the chat as well.